Now there's gotta be some perks to owning a 64 year old fire engine, maintenance costs, repair costs, insurance costs, abysmal fuel consumption. At the minute, it's gonna take me about 20 minutes to get home from work. If I use the blue lights and the two-tone air horn, that should only take me about five. Okay, here we go. today's video we're going to talk about UK law regarding sirens uh, and the use of blue lights. So welcome back to the channel and without further ado, let's get started. So under current UK law, all the links will be in the description, um, the only people who can use blue lights and sirens are emergency vehicles. What is the legal definition of an emergency vehicle? The definitions I'm going to give you then is pulled from the Road Vehicle Lighting Regulations 1989 uh, and the specific section is in part 1, 2, 2. Uh, and in there you've got the expression emergency vehicle. So the definition is a motor vehicle of any of the following descriptions. So the ones we're interested in are A a vehicle used for fire brigade, ambulance or police purposes. So what does this mean to your average private individual who owns a fire engine? Your average user is going to fall into category A, which is a vehicle used for fire brigade, ambulance or police purposes. Unlike an ambulance, which is basically a glorified van because they strip all the kit out and it is literally a transit van or a, you know, a beefier version of a van, a police car without the police livery and without the blue lights on top and the ANPR computers is just a car. Um, a fire engine can only be a fire engine. You cannot repurpose it unless you strip out the tank and the pump. Aside from that, its only purpose can be a fire engine. As long as it still functions and can function as a um, fire extinguishing vehicle, then still falls into category A. It's not about who owns it, it's about the purpose of the vehicle. Okay, so the next question then is, when can I fit blue lights? So for fitting blue lights, again, we're looking at the Road Vehicles Lighting Regulations, 1989. This time we're in part two, section 16, specifically what you're looking at on your screen now. Uh, so the title is Restrictions on Fitting Blue Warning Beacons, Special Warning Lamps and Similar Devices. Section 16 states then, no vehicle other than an emergency vehicle shall be fitted with a blue warning beacon or special warning lamp or a device which resembles a blue warning beacon or a special warning lamp, whether the same is in working order or not. This Green Goddess is a fire engine. The pump works on it, the tank works on it. We've already explained that it is an emergency vehicle under the regulations. Therefore, uh, the restrictions don't apply to this vehicle, which means we can install and have fitted a blue warning beacon or special warning lamp. So the takeaway is only emergency vehicles can be fitted with blue flashing lights or beacons or anything that looks like a blue flashing light, whether working or not. If you're new to the channel, basically I'm restoring a 1956 Green Goddess fire engine. I've got two of them, the other one hasn't arrived yet. So please do me a massive favor and subscribe to the channel and like this video. Um, it'll take you literally five seconds to do it. You can continue watching this video. It won't take you away from anything, but it makes a huge difference to the channel. And you know what? If you don't like the next couple of videos, well, in a couple of weeks, unsubscribe if you want to. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out. Okay, so now we know when we can fit the blue lights. The next question we have is, when can I use blue lights? We're going to be looking into the Road Vehicles Lighting Regulations 1989, this time in Part 3, Section 27, and specifically looking into 3 and 6. So in this table, there's a whole list of different regulations for lighting. So that's headlights, hazard warning lights, etc. And what this table shows is the only times when specific lights can be used is in the column next to it. So in our case, we look at item six and we read warning beacon emitting blue light and special warning lamp. And the exemption is used so as to be lit except one at the scene of an emergency or two 
when it is necessary or desirable either to indicate to persons using the road the urgency of the purpose for which the vehicle is being used or to warn persons of the presence of the vehicle or a hazard on the road. So in a nutshell, the only times when you can use your blue lights as an emergency vehicle is when you are responding to an emergency at the scene of an emergency or that there is a hazard on the road. Okay, so the next question then is, when can I fit a bell, gong, siren or two-tone horn? Sounds very specific and there's a reason for that. So it's specific because it's taken straight out of the regulation. References for this uh, particular bit of law is a little bit different. So this law comes from the Road Vehicles Construction and Use Regulations 1986, Part 2, Foxtrot 37. So, Part 4 states, subject to paragraphs 5, 6 and 7, no motor vehicles shall be fitted with a bell, gong, siren or two-tone horn. So that's your blanket ban. The provisions of paragraph 4 shall not apply to motor vehicles, alpha, used for fire brigade, ambulance or police purposes, bravo, owned by a body formed primarily for the purposes of fire salvage and used for those or similar purposes, charlie, owned by the forestry commission or by local authorities and used from time to time for the purposes of fighting fires. Part 7. Subject to paragraph 8, the provisions of paragraph 4 shall not apply so as to make it unlawful for a vehicle to be fitted with a bell, gong or siren, Alpha, if the purpose thereof is to prevent theft or attempted theft of the vehicle or its contents, or Bravo, in the case of a bus, if the purpose thereof is to summon help for the driver, the conductor, or an inspector. And finally, eight, every bell, gong, or siren fitted to a vehicle by virtue of paragraph seven alpha, and every device fitted to a motor vehicle first used on or after 1st of October 1982, so as to cause a horn to sound for the purpose mentioned in paragraph 7a, shall be fitted with a device designed to stop the bell, gong, siren or horn emitting noise for a continuous period of more than five minutes. And every such device shall at all times be maintained in good work in order. So in general, the rule is you can't do it. Blanket ban. The exception to that blanket ban then, if the vehicle is being used or has the purpose of fire brigade, ambulance or police purposes. In that case, you are allowed to fit a bell, gong, siren or two-tone horn. For all other vehicles, it is illegal. Simple as. Now, the exception to this is that there are uh, some circumstances in which a bell, gong or siren are allowed on non-emergency vehicles. And this is to prevent theft. So, aka your car siren alarm, you're allowed to have that installed. However, the limitation is... Um, it's limited to five minutes, so it must have a circuit in it that after five minutes of continuous um, sounding, it switches off. Or if you're, uh, if you're in a bus, then a bus alarm um, can also have a siren if its purpose is to attract attention and help the driver or conductor. Um, and also an unusual exemption is obviously ice cream vans. One of the final questions then is, when can I use a bell, gong, siren or two-tone horn? So we've established when we can fit it, now we've got to work out well, when can we actually switch them on and use them. So references for this then, so this is coming from the Road Vehicles Construction and Use Regulations 1986 Part 4 um, Echo Section 99. So Section 99 which is on your screen now states that subject to the following paragraphs no person shall sound or cause or permit to be sounded any horn, gong, bell or siren fitted to or carried on a vehicle which is alpha stationary on a road at any time other than at times of danger due to another moving vehicle on or near the road or bravo in motion on a restricted road between 2330 and 0700 hours in the following morning five nothing in paragraph one or four shall prevent the sounding of alpha an instrument or apparatus fitted to or otherwise carried on a vehicle at a time when the vehicle is being used for one of the purposes specified in Regulation 37.5. Remember, Regulation 37.5 is a regulation that we just went through that allows you to fit a bell gong siren or two-tone horn. And it is necessary or desirable to do so either to indicate to other road users the urgency of the purposes for which the vehicle is being used or to warn other road users of the presence of the vehicle on the road.
Essentially, the summary of this is, if you're an emergency vehicle and you're happy that within the regulations you're allowed to fit the uh, siren, bell, gong, horn or two-tone horn, the only times you can use them are when you are physically at the scene of an emergency or when you are en route to a current and urgent emergency situation in which the vehicle will be used for fire, ambulance or police purposes. It's one thing to have these fitted to a, to a vintage vehicle or to an, uh, an emergency vehicle such as a fire engine, but using these you absolutely cannot use any type of siren, alarm or two-tone horn unless you are the actual emergency services. So the reason that you know these regulations are so strict on who can fit the, the lights and the sirens and who can use them is because they are an emergency system. It is a system by which, because it's so well protected, as soon as any other motorist hears them, the instant reaction is, right, I've got to move over, I've got to let this vehicle pass. Um, if you abuse that, you, you risk ruining the trust of that system. Okay, so now let's talk about some common misconceptions. The first one is, I can use something that just looks like a blue light as long as it doesn't work. The answer is, it's clearly false. Preserved emergency vehicles by default can have blue lights. It is false. Just because you are a vintage vehicle, preserved vehicle, or the vehicle originally had it, you, you cannot use it by default unless it can be classed as an emergency vehicle. If the switch is too far away for the driver to activate when driving, then that is okay. So if you've got blue lights or sirens, you know, um, if the switch is sort of back here somewhere and you can't actually activate it while driving, then it's, then it's okay. Um, again, completely false. You know, it doesn't matter if that switch worked or not. Exceptions when it comes to private land. So, and on private land, yes, you can use your your blues and twos, your sirens. You could have a whole vehicle made out of one giant beacon if you really wanted to. However, there is a, a common misconception here um, about what private land is. A lot of people, when they're learning to drive, will go to an industrial estate or a car park um, because it's private land. Private land is land that the public have no right of way to and can't just be accessed by the public. So, so what that means is if you have a, a fenced property that has a gate that is shut and has a padlock on it, then there is there's no way that the public can access your property unless they actually break in. So that is 100% private land. If, for example, a company um, such as a grocery store or something like that um, or for industrial states, the council owns the land and it's free access to the public such as a car park or where all they've got to do is push a button, they'll get a ticket, they've got to pay a fee at the end of it, then that is actually not classed as private land because the public still have um, easy access to it and it, they're not restricted. Things like private car parks, campsites, private estates, um, etc. A lot of these, while they're owned by private individuals or private companies, uh, they don't fall under private law for the purpose of insurance uh, and road traffic regulations. Okay, so you may have seen then um, from the various camera angles in the backgrounds that the Green Goddess is no longer outside. She is indeed inside dry storage um, and quite unusual dry storage as well. That's you've probably seen various vehicles um, uh, and uh, weapons in the background as well. Point out now that they're all decommissioned and they're all heritage or uh, vintage um, vehicles and items.